and thank you for watching QAC TV 7. We've got a delightful new show. Every week we have a show called Senior Moments, and this is geared for the 55 plus crowd. We're here to tell you things that make your life easier. We've had yoga instructors, you name it, we've had it. This week I have one of my favorite people, Dr. Tom Walsh. Tom, thank you yeah, for being with us. Great, thanks. Now, Tom, before we get started, let's just go through the intro. Medical doctor, outstanding. Thank you. Sitting judge on the Queen Anne's County Orphans Court. Okay. You're now, now give me the title correct with hospice. I'm the chief medical director for hospice. Chief medical director for hospice, a beekeeper, avid baseball fan. We're sitting here talking about Ireland. The Renaissance man comes <laughs> right. to the studio, all right? Tom, rather than me rave on, I think one of the best things I'd like to do for everybody is help them with some simple medical guide. You know, what are some things us seniors should be looking at? It? Right. Hey, you've got some goodies there. Get started and we'll go from there. Yeah, I made a little list. There's, Appreciate you it. Know, there's a lot of things people, you know, over 50, over 55 should think about, but I wanted to simplify it. So one of the big things I think that uh, 55 plus people should keep in mind is immunizations. Okay. You know, we think of immunizations for little kids, but there's immunizations. It's all for, over the papers. Measles oh is my God, back. Yeah, Come on, right. what's going on? Oh, right. but tell but, me about for But seniors. there's immunizations for adults, so we need okay. to keep up on those. So there's a few that I want to talk about. One is a pneumonia vaccine. Okay. There's a vaccine that's a very effective vaccine to prevent pneumonia in adults. Um, and it's a little confusing for when people go to the doctor because there's actually two pneumonia vaccines. Right. A lot of people have said, well, I've had the pneumonia vaccine. And there's a new one that's come out. You've probably seen it advertised on TV. It's always on during, you know, Wheel of Fortune and okay. all the things that 55 people watch. <laughs> We're watching. Yeah, exactly. So there's a, a vaccine called Pneumovax. That's the one that's been around for a long time. There was a few bugs that could get around Pneumovax, so they came up with another one called Prevnar 13. Okay. Most seniors, unless, I would say every senior, unless there's some very unusual circumstance, should have both of those vaccines. Now, are they yearly or just once? No, you, both of them are one time and you're done. One time and we're done. But, but they're not given at the same time. They're okay. given a year apart. Oh, okay. So you get one, then you get the second one, then you're done. But definitely get that pneumonia vaccine. The pneumonia vaccine's a lifesaver. Oh, yeah, good. People That's good need to, to know. Get that. I don't get it. Guess what? I'm going to organize and get it. Okay. Yeah, you should. Um, and there's no problem with that vaccine right now, getting it. Uh, the supply is good and people can get it. The second vaccine I want to talk about is shingles vaccine. Okay. You know, everybody knows somebody who's had shingles. Oh, and that's a painful horrible thing. when they hurt. It's painful. Okay. It goes on forever and ever, and you don't want to get shingles. So there was a shingles vaccine um, called Zostavax, okay. and we've been giving people that Zostavax vaccine probably for about, oh, I don't know, 10 years or more. And it was a fairly effective vaccine, but it was probably only effective in the 50 to 70 percent range. The people who got shingles who had that vaccine got a milder case of okay. shingles, but it still wasn't a perfect vaccine. About a year and a half ago, a new vaccine came out, and it's called Shingrix. Oh, These Shingrix. are the trade names. Okay, that's fine. Um, so it's also a shingles vaccine. It's much more effective. It's in now again once once a year. Once both of these vaccines. Well, the Shingrix vaccine is once no, is once and you're done. Except okay. it's a two dose vaccine. You get okay. it eight two weeks shots. apart. Okay. Yeah. So um, Shingrix is a great vaccine. It has a 95, 98% effectiveness. It's way better than the and previous vaccine. And what you hear of people who have shingles, you want to get that shot. Oh, it's oh, a horrible Lord. vaccine. Yes. I mean, it's a horrible Disease. illness. Yeah, the yeah. vaccine's fine. Okay. Um, the problem with Shingrix, though, is it became incredibly popular right away. And so if you go to get it, um, it's back ordered all okay. the time. So there's a, there's a supply problem right now. But um, from what I understand, that supply problem is probably going to be it's fixed sometime better. this year. Yeah. Okay, so get your pneumonia vaccines. Yep. Get your shingles vaccines. What right. else you got on your And then list? don't forget about flu shots. You know, I know there's controversy every year about whether right. flu shots are right. going to be effective or not. But getting a flu shot as a senior is still, you're still ahead of the game if okay. you get it. You might, they might not be perfect every year. You know, they, the CDC tries to guess what strain of flu right. is going to be right. going around. So they guess, and sometimes they guess right, and sometimes they guess okay. wrong. But, like life, it's like yeah, life. Exactly, like but, life. Uh, but getting a flu shot is really important. The two groups of people that get in big trouble with the flu are babies okay. and, and, and seniors. seniors. And, our seniors. Um, and then, just in terms of immunizations, you don't want to forget about the regular immunizations that, like tetanus vaccines, and, right. and, and if you were traveling, you might want to talk to your doctor about vaccines for you travel, like hepatitis and right. stuff like that. 
So vaccines are a, a good thing to. Okay, and that's, that's good. People don't. Mind. I mean, I didn't know about the pneumonia thing at all. Yeah. Shingles, it, I'd heard about. Right. Okay. So get these. Get these flu shots. Get it now and go through your private. You know. Yeah, you can go provider. right. And actually, there was a law passed in the state, and I don't know the details about it, but it was several years ago that said if you're 60 years old, if you've reached your 60th birthday, right. you don't need a doctor's prescription to get any vaccine. You could walk into any pharmacy in the state Again. and say, I want a shingles vaccine, or I want a pneumonia vaccine, or I want a tetanus shot. Okay. So you don't have to go to your doctor to get these shots. Just, but get the shots but, is yeah, the important Yeah, but actually thing. get okay. the shots, because yeah. it, it, everybody I've ever had that's had shingles regrets oh, the fact that they didn't get the shot. Painful, yeah. okay. Besides some shots, what else you got So the second list? thing I was wanted to mention that's really important for seniors is exercise. Okay, and, uh, my favorite topic. Go yeah, I know. so you'll be right up uh, this alley. But um, exercise is so important at every stage of your life, but with seniors, it's really important. And, you know, I, I did some recent reading about um, people, when I was in practice every day, people used to ask me, you know, they'd say, my mother had dementia, what can I do to prevent right, that? Or right. should I be worried about it? There's evidence that people who exercise regularly decrease their chances of getting dementia by 30%. You're kidding me. And now, a daily, a daily, yeah. Or well, a what they're recommending is yeah. 150 minutes of exercise a week. Okay. So you can three times 50 minutes, or five times 30 minutes, or it doesn't matter how you divide up. Yeah. Just exercise. Exercise, and it doesn't have to. You know, you don't have to become a gym rat. Okay. Just um, walk. Some, walking. That's walking. perfect. And okay. it's Walking's easy, cheap, and safe sure. for the most part. And you don't have to go and buy a bunch of stuff. Yeah. You don't have to join in and just walk out the door, breathe the fresh air. And exactly. Walk. So walking 30 minutes five times a week decreases your chances of developing dementia. It decreases your chances of, de of developing diabetes. And also, even if you are diabetic, it makes it easier to control. It decreases your uh, chances of developing problems with heart disease, hypertension. Mm. It, it's, it's like this magic. The miracle, the it miracle is. Thing. It's a miracle drug and it's free. Okay, so seniors, get your shots. So Get out and exercise. So then th the other thing I want to talk about just briefly is routine screenings. You know, people talk about, um, should I have a colonoscopy? Should I have a mammogram? Should I have a pap smear? Should I have a bone density test? Right. All those things are important. There's different criteria for when you should get them and when you should not get them and at what age you stop getting them. Some of those screening tests you don't have to get forever and ever. Okay. Um, they, they stop at certain ages. But um, a good way to sort that out is, of course, to talk to your primary care doctor. But also, for those people who are Medicare age, Medicare um, doesn't pay for regular traditional hands-on physical exams. Right, right. But what Medicare did uh, do and, and, and will pay for, what, and by the way, with no co-pays or, or anything, you know, most okay. Medicare visits have a co-pay. Right. Medicare developed this thing called an annual wellness visit. And so you can go to your primary care doctor and, and almost every doctor who sees Medicare patients will do this. They'll say, you know, just tell them, I, I want this annual wellness visit. Now, remember, it's not a hands-on physical right, the thing we're right. used to, but what it is is it's a sit-down review of all of your screening tests that you should have had done. Oh, you know, very good. Have you been screened for memory loss? Have you been screened for um, falling, you know, for uh, uh, increased risk of falls? Right. Have you been screened for depression? And, um, and this is covered? And this is covered, covered. And the best part about it, like I said, you know, most Medicare visits are covered 80%. Right. Medicare pays 100% 100 on that. And so you can just say to your doctor, I want the Medicare wellness visit, and the, your doctor or nurse practitioner or whoever you're, you're seeing will um, go over all your health screening things, the kinds of the stuff we're talking about today. And just to remind you, yeah, hey, and, get this done, get this right, done. Right, and, and then ask a few questions that dig into a few things like depression and you know, your chances of falling and things like that. Because you know, yeah. if you think about it, um, it's not really altruistic. It saves money. No. Um, when it people saves stay hospital healthy. Stays. It exactly. makes all of our lives easier. And that's just picking up your health care provider and saying, hey, look, I like this wellness visit. Yeah, you oh, say, I, okay. I want a Medicare annual wellness visit. But great. Okay. And, um, so, in addition to the health things, I, you know, I wear a bunch of different hats, as you I know, mentioned. I know. Beginning. So, I also. I like when you say you're retired. You're not retired. I know. Okay. It's, it's fake retirement. It's <laughs> fake, yeah. fake news. Yeah. So, anyway, um, the other thing is, you know, people. Um, over 55 or almost any age, but certainly over 50 or 55, should make sure that they've had or at least given some thought to advanced directives. And I don't know if people okay. know what advanced directives are. No, why are. can you explain? Yeah, yeah, so advanced directives are thinking about what you would want done for yourself 
if you were in a position where you couldn't make your own health decisions. Okay, so I'm, I'm in the hospital, I can't make decisions, this directive will do what? Yes, so yeah. let's say, you know, you, God forbid, have some bad thing happen, like a stroke, and you're in the hospital and the doctor comes up and, and says, Mrs. McNeil, do you know if Fred wanted us to put him on a ventilator if he stopped yeah. breathing? And, you know, if, if you've never had that discussion, your wife will say, you know, heck, know. I don't know. You know, yeah. we never talked about so it. So you actually will write out for the yeah. family and the help the health care provider. That's right. Family. So you, there's, it, there's, if you look up advanced directives on the Internet, you'll see all kinds of um, websites that will help you sort through, Get through the it. things you need to do. And there's okay. actually some forms you can print out, have the discussion with your family, make sure that your family knows how you feel. And even if... I mean, this isn't perfect, but even if you don't write it down, at least you've had the discussion with sure. your family. So and that's, it makes it easier. I know when we went through with my mom, it's easier if you can go to a, a file cabinet and say, here's what mom wanted. Yeah, exactly. And if A happens, we can do this, right. et cetera, et cetera. So you, you need to have that discussion. It's so important. I don't know how many times in when I was in practice, when I, I work with hospice, you know, I'll, I'll talk to a family member and they'll say, you know, I don't know what he wanted. Yeah, you know? yeah. So put so, it down on paper. It makes yeah, so, everybody's life easier, including not only the family, the right. patient and the medical health provider. Absolutely. Oh, great. Okay. And, and then one other thing with the other hat that I wear. That's um, okay. Is, is this B? So we're going to go into No, the, this okay. is the judge hat. <laughs> oh, okay. Everybody should make sure that they've, they have a will. Because that's another big mess. Oh, what a uh, you have to deal with the, the people that don't, right? right. As a Pe judge. People end up passing away, and everybody thinks they're not going to die, but we all do. Oh, I know. And uh, so it's really important to make sure that you have a will and that you've talked to and written down, not just talked to, but okay. written down what you want done with your it's personal It's a legal belongings. document so right. everyone knows what's going to happen. Because I don't know how many times, you know, even before I was uh, working with the Orphans Court, that I've talked to people and they said, you know, you know, my husband died, but he didn't make any arrangements, mm. and, or, or somebody died and didn't make any arrangements. And, and uh, that, there's just no reason to not do that, you know? You're more comfortable. I just know my mom passed away a year ago, in May, and she told us exactly where everything in terms of financial, et cetera, but she also told us funeral arrangements she wanted, right. other proceedings, and it was like, hey, we're doing what she wanted. Well, not exactly, what we wanted. and you know what? When you do that, it's a gift to your family. Oh, it is. It makes because, it easier. It's because easier. Because your family doesn't have to stop and think about sure. all those and things. And you don't have those little tense moments that you, no, no, this is what I want. Would you please honor those right. wishes? Right, and we know that we're doing what the person wanted, you know, yeah. rather than making some kind of wild guess. Okay. Well, look, at they're all great. Let's go over the list again. All right, number one, shots. Right. Okay, make sure we sit down and we look, talk about flu things, shingles, pneumonia, right. get in a routine, working with it, your health care provider, whatever it is, get a plan so you get those shots. It's so exactly. important, okay? Right. Second on your the, list. The yeah, second go, one was uh, exercise. Okay, and my favorite, you're recommending do something, walk. That you don't have to lift weights and you don't have to hit punching bags, exactly. but do something because the effects that it has on the body are so positive. Everything from dementia, to you said, to high blood pressure. Right. I, I, you know, people used to ask me all the time when I was in practice, they'd come in and they'd have uh, borderline high blood pressure and they'd say, Doc, what can I do before we get into prescriptions to take, yeah. to take care of my high blood pressure? And really, there's only two things you can do to lower your blood pressure without drugs. One of them is to de decrease the amount of salt you eat, Okay. but the big one is regular exercise. Just exercise. And what's so great in Queen Anne's County with our YMCA, with all the other private right. clubs where you can exercise, and if not, you can walk on the side of the road, bike on the side of the road. Right. We've got kayaking. We've got a little bit of everything, so it's easy. Oh, I know. And, and, and most of the time, you can you, you find something that's fun. And oh, yeah. So it's not work. It's fun. And it, you don't have to be a nut about it. You can just be, you know, this is part of my day. It's like brushing your teeth. Yeah. It's, a, it's an insurance policy. And, and then and after that, we talked about the routine screenings, okay. like colonoscopy, mammography, Bone density, and bone density is not just a woman thing. I mean, okay. there's men who get Gosh, osteoporosis yeah. as well. And I like your wellness thing. The right. idea when you go and say, look at uh, Social Security, I, I can be covered because I'm a senior. Let's, let's make sure we understand what test I should be doing and plan it out, right? Right, and you know, one of the th things that is always in the way in all healthcare issues is money. Right. You know, because uh, unfortunately healthcare is expensive, but that, but that Medicare wellness visit, like I said, they, there's not even that's a copay We should all be doing it. Yeah. I mean, that's, to me, I don't know how the folks feel out here. That's a no-brainer. Get it done. And what I used to do um, sometimes is I would say to people, well, if you're too busy to do the, make a separate visit for your annual wellness visit, right. 
just let the receptionist know and we'll incorporate it into Combine one of your other all. visits. Okay, you that know, makes so sense. When you come in for your routine visit for your high blood pressure or diabetes or whatever it is you're coming in for, um, we'll just incorporate the annual wellness review or the annual wellness visit it's simple. in with that visit. And, it's a, and like I said, it's a sit down and review of you know, what you've been, what you need and what you should have done. Because you have so many things in your life. It's nice to have someone say, hey, don't forget now. Let's get this done this year. Let's get, let's organize that we get all these things done this year, right? right? Which is good. And then the other two you had, the will, of course, we, yeah. as much as we don't like to talk about, you've got to talk about it. I know. The family needs to know for their security, your security, and also the, the directive. The if, advanced directives are so yes, important. Yeah. You know, it's so sad when we get in, awkward situations uh, with people who are terminally imagine. ill yeah. and we don't know what they wanted. Oh, no. So, you know, I mean, there's laws that regulate, you know, who gets to be the decision right, maker and all right. that. But, you know, we don't want to do it by laws. We want to do it by what the people the want. And yeah. your life is made simpler. Again, just taking my experience, because my mom let us help with financial things, you know, and statements and medical things and her post-life things. Everyone, it made a very difficult time easier. Right. right. And, it, and it was and, a and big it's, help. It's so much better and so much easier. And just to get back to the immunizations, sure. I, I, sure. walked, I mean, I went past it really quickly, okay. but when people are traveling, a lot of seniors uh, use their retirement it's time, time to, to travel. travel. Sure. That's another time to review your immunizations. Okay. Because, you know, I mean, you don't want to end up going on vacation to Mexico and, and getting hepatitis no, or something like that. Right. So there's vaccines for hepatitis. Of course, you want to keep your regular immunizations like your tetanus shot and all that. Get up them up to date. Yeah. Well, Tom, our time is just a bit out. Now, the nice thing about you, I know I can bring you back on for beekeeping. If we, can give, if we have to, we can come back and talk about hospice. We can talk about baseball. We'll talk about the Orioles if you oh, want. Well, or the Nationals. <laughs> which would be a very tragic show. Okay. Yeah, right. Well, look at Tom, thank yeah. you very much for okay. coming on. Yeah, thanks. I'm Fred McNeil. Thank you for watching Senior Moments here on QAC TV 7. We had Dr. Tom Walsh with us today. Talked about some wonderful topics you need to follow up on, and let's get done. I'm Fred McNeil. My time's up. Thank you for your time. We're going to see you next time.